All right, so today I'm going to go over how to build a very basic Samba server on the BeagleBone Black, and we're going to use a hard disk drive or an SSD, whatever you have to plug in, it doesn't matter. So we're going to go ahead and open up Putty, and you're going to want to make sure you have the newest version of Ubuntu flashed onto the BeagleBone Black, as it is required for this guide. So we're going to go ahead and log into Ubuntu, and your password is going to be temp PWD. So T E M P P W D. I'm going to type in my password. All right, now that we're in, we're going to want to do a sudo apt-get update. And that's just going to update our repos and be sure that we are on the newest version of the repos so we don't get any old versions of Samba. Now, while it does this, I'll go over a few things about this guide for Samba drives. This is going to be a very basic setup, and anyone on your internal network will be able to access it. And you will only be able to access it from your internal network. What that means is if someone's driving down the street and hops on your Wi-Fi, they will be able to access this if they know how to. But you will not be able to access it from any other Wi-Fi point. Say you're over at McDonald's and you want to access it. You cannot with this guide. And the reason for that is going to be that we're not going to add any security to it, so that way it's simple. And if we don't add any security, that means that anybody on the good old internet could hop on your drive and mess with your files, which is what we want to avoid. So now that that's done, we're going to go ahead and install a program called NTFS. And what that does is allow you to read the file system on your HDD. So we're going to do sudo apt-get install NTFS-3G. And now it's going to take a second for you to install that. It took me about two or three minutes, so you're going to want to go ahead and pause the video. And I'll see you then. All right, now that you have that installed, we're going to go ahead and make the directory to which we're going to mount our drive. So we're going to type in CD just to be sure we're back at the home. And we're going to type in sudo mkdir. And that stands for make directory, mkdir slash mnt. And as you see, I get the error because my file already exists, but you won't get that error. Then we're going to hit the up key on our keyboard so it brings up that old command and then add a USB drive to it. There we go. So now that the file exists, we're going to go down and make sure that our HDD is connected. So be sure your HDD is plugged into your BeagleBone Black at this time. And once you are sure it is, type in ls slash dev slash sd artisk, and that'll pull up everything that's connected. Now, if you have more than one thing connected, you're going to get a little bit different of an output than I did. But if you only have one thing connected, you're going to get the same output, and you're going to want to use slash dev slash sda1. So I'd recommend keeping only one thing plugged in just so it's simple. And we're going to go ahead and use that slash dev slash sda1 then. All right. And you're going to want to make sure you keep this mount command handy because every time you power off your beagle bone, you're going to have to re-enter this mount command. All right. So we're going to go ahead and mount now. And it's going to be m-o-u-n-t. And I'll go ahead and paste all of these commands into the description just so it's easy for you to copy and paste them in. And it's going to be mount slash dev slash sda1. And then we're going to type in our mount location, which is going to be mnt slash, oop, no dot. It's going to be mnt slash USB drive, which is that folder we just created. And we're probably going to want to make sure we do it as a root. So sudo that command. And as you can see, it's denied because I'm already, I already have it mounted. So we're going to go ahead and go into the next thing. We're going to install Samba now. Now this is going to take you a while to install once again, so you're going to want to pause the video once you type in the command. So sudo apt git, and it's going to be samba, samba, common, ben. Oops, I added too many sambas there. <laughs> and we're going to make sure we put in install. And as you can see, I already have the newest version of Samba Common Ben. So the next step we're going to do after you're done installing is edit the config file. Now we're going to edit the config file in a special way. So you're going to want to make sure that you do watch this part and you paste it in the correct location. If you do not paste it in the correct location, this will fail to work and you'll be stuck without a Samba drive. So we're going to use Nano for this. Feel free to use your favorite text editor. And if you have no idea what I'm talking about, just copy and paste the command like you have been. And we're going to do sudo nano slash etc slash samba slash smb.conf 
conf snb dot conf and that's going to open up our config file and we're going to want to scroll all the way to the bottom all right now that we're at the bottom we're going to go back up a little bit here and we're going to find a location that says printers so you're going to want to watch right here on the left side you'll see something like this this is what it'll look like you'll see printers and then above printers is going to be profiles with all these um ends here so you're going to want to scroll down under printers and you're going to see the line create mask right here scroll down one under that and paste the thing copied in the description that looks like this it's going to say public comment path browsable writable guest and read only now you're going to hit Control x and y when prompted and then enter again and it's going to save that for me i'm just going to have to hit Control x because i didn't edit anything so Control x all right now that we have that done we're going to go ahead and close putty Yes, we want to close the session. We're going to go down here to our file browser. If you're on a different version of Windows, go ahead and open it to your devices and locations. Now you're going to see here's my local hard disk and here's my boot drive. And I have this connected as a, as a network location as Z. And I'll show you how to map it to your computer like that. So you're going to go over here on the left side and scroll all the way down to network. You're going to see ARM. You might have to come up here and hit your refresh button first. So I'll hit that real quick. It'll take a second to pop up because your computer goes through all of your IP addresses. And now you're going to see a folder called public. And all of your file systems will pop up right here. If it is done correctly. For some reason mine aren't pop popping up, but that's not going to affect our guide at all here. I might have just, it might have just been because I edited the config file and didn't remount after that. So next to get a you can put a shortcut on your desktop like this where it'll open up right into your files and as you can see it did work this time and I have demo right here and if I hit back here we go here's all my files and that's just because I have it installed as a um, network location here so to do that we're gonna go back into our file editor we're gonna go down to network we're gonna click on arm we're gonna open it just to make sure it works one last time there it is now that I access the drive it all pops up so once you make sure it's all popping up, you're going to go up here to this PC, add a network location in your top bar right here. Oh, I'm sorry, you're going to hit Map Network Drive. And you're going to select Z or Y. You just want to, you want to pick an end one here just to be sure that it's not used by your computer. And you, you can, um, you're going to hit Browse. You're going to find ARM, and you can select any one of these folders that you would like that are on your HDD. Now, if you have no folders on your HDD, you're going to select Public, hit OK. Hit, make sure that reconnect at sign in is selected hit finish and it's going to pop this up close that and right here it is it's going to be down here at network locations and if it's not connected there'll be a big red x to symbolize that you don't have a connection now if we want to add it to our desktop like i did here we're going to go ahead and right click this and simply create shortcut and that's going to pop up somewhere on my desktop right there it is Double click on that and there's everything and there you go. You have your SAML server connected to your desktop. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Be sure to check out the links in the description. We got a link to one of our websites where we sell some uh, multi-boot USB drives. You can boot right into your computer, right into uh, Linux from those drives. They're pretty neat. So be sure to check those out. Go ahead and subscribe. Watch our other videos and we'll be back soon with more.